Faith sat at the keyboard and prepared to create. The document cursor blinked cheerfully at her as she waited for her muse to inspire her as they always had before. She had written three best-selling novels and one turd sandwich that she was still trying to swallow. Her ill-chosen break into the world of adult romance, Seven Sons, had bombed about as hard as a book could. But, it was time for Faith to get back on that horse and try again. After a year of producing nothing but traffic for every bad book reviewer who read Seven Sons, her bank account was starting to dwindle, and it was time to mount the horse or put him in the barn forever. The whirring of the blades let her know they were close behind her. It had been a one in a million chance, a chance at freedom or a chance at death, and Cadence had beaten the odds, it seemed. She should feel lucky. Most people in Ferrist only looked at their tickets every week and felt like losers. Cadence was the lucky lotto winner, but not of a prize that anyone wanted. Cadence had won the right to be killed by her friends and neighbors. Cadence had won the right to a spidery laugh crept from behind her as her fingers froze on the keys. She looked around the office, trying to see where the source of the laughter had come from. Was the TV on? The laughter hadn't sounded normal, it had sounded mechanical. She put it out of her mind as she went back to writing. The laughter had rankled her. She had spent far too long being laughed at. Seven Sons should have been a hit. The formula was there, the chemistry was there, and with her name on it, it should have sold just as well as her other three books. It was the story of a noble woman stranded on a desert planet with a series of suns rising one after the other. The planet is a barren wasteland owned by a despot and his army of mercenaries. The woman's only chance of surviving is to take sanctuary with the native Barosens who oppose despot. She falls in love with Pavian, a desert guide who leads her to their king, and their love blossoms in the shadow of war. It should have been a hit, a romance-slash-sci-fi masterpiece. It had bombed almost before she even released it. Cadence had won the right to be this year's lotto prize. Cadence looked at her mother, that pillar of strength in a world of perpetual disappointment. Her father and brothers were still, for once, their forks stalled in their rooting through the contents of their TV trays. They looked at her now with something other than their usual indifference. They looked at her now like a pack of wild dogs looked at a bowl of steak. They knew what killing her would net them, and they didn't care about the ties of blood that bound them. Failure, came a gentle chuckle in her left ear. Faith shuddered as she twisted violently in her chair. She looked around the room furtively, trying to find the source of the voice. It had to be the TV or something. There was no one else in her apartment but her. It was early evening, the shadows gathering outside her window making her think dusk would settle soon. She had only been up a few hours, preferring to write at night. What use did she have for being awake during the day anyway? Just one more reason for her editor to yell at her. This was all her fault anyway. She was the one who had suggested she try something different. They had been at lunch when she told her about her intentions to write a romance novel. They were sitting at Louise's, out on the patio, and Joyce had asked her if she had thought about her next book yet. This was back when she was the golden child of Norma Publishing, her five years on the New York Times bestseller list still fresh in their mind, and Joyce had been wild to get her next bestseller. A romance novel. She'd asked, squeezing lemons into her tea, it's not really your thing, but it couldn't hurt. Well, I was thinking of doing something in a sci-fi romance, but with more of an emphasis on romance. Joyce nodded, the ice cubes clinking in the glass, well, it doesn't sound too bad. As long as you can write romance as well as you write science fiction, then I'd say we should have another hit on our hands. Turns out, Faith couldn't deliver in the end. Run, Cadence, her mother shouted, and Cadence felt her feet guide her back towards the kitchen. As her father lumbered to his feet, the TV tray spilling onto the carpet, Cadence heard his feet tangle in the tray as he went down. Her two brothers, boys she had helped raise while her mother was at work and her father was in an inebriated coma, came lumbering up as well, 
and she threw the kitchen door in Brett's face as he ate up the carpet with his runner's legs. He made a sound like a tap keg of beer and stumbled back, but Travis shoved the door and was in the kitchen before she could escape out the back. Cadence cried out as she struggled with the lock, tears streaming down her face as she expected to be caught in Travis's hands at any minute. She shuddered as that scrabble laughter scuttled across her eardrums again. She looked over at the window but knew it was closed. Besides, no one laughed like that. No one except the audience in sitcoms. The laughter was as fake as her blonde hair. Blondes sell more books, Joyce had said, so her muddy brown hair had become a dazzling blonde. No glasses on any of the book jackets that had her picture either. The contacts changed her eyes from green to blue, and thus Faith Moore became Faye Moore with nothing but a little makeup and some well-placed deception. No one except the people she'd gone to school with knew what she looked like. No one besides the people she'd gone to school with ever laughed at her. Cadence heard the grating of wood as someone grabbed a chair from the table. No good, said that spider voice, but she ignored it. She yanked at the door again before realizing that the second deadbolt was still on and twisting it fervently. She gritted her teeth against the laughter of that make-believe audience, her life beginning to feel like a bad friend's skit. See Phoebe struggling to write something. See Rachel bent over a spreadsheet as she works. Watch them suffer, watch them toil, and listen to the audience lap it up. That was comedy, right? Watching someone else struggle while you sat back and watched? She heard the heavy thunk of the wood and believed she must go unconscious at any moment. He would brain her with the chair, had already brained her with the chair, and she was just lying on the floor as her head went right on believing that she was conscious. She would wake up in the less than loving arms of the lottery commission if she ever woke up at all, and that would be all for her less than impressive 20 years of life. She caught the dark spot out of the corner of her eye, that cradle of darkness, and imagined she could see something hunched there. What was it? She didn't know, but she felt certain she could feel something watching her from there. As the night came on outside and the shadows stretched into true darkness, Faith became more and more certain that something was watching her from that pocket. Was it making the laughing noises she was hearing? Was it what she was afraid of now as she sat working on her manuscript? As scared as she was, her well-trained fingers kept right on tapping away, too locked in their own monotony to stop now. They called to her these creatures of darkness. They wanted her talented hands, her nimble mind, to write for them an opus. They needed her, but she was afraid. Faith feared what lay within that darkness, that soupy moor of uncertainty, but as she denied them, she only stoked their desire for her. Their trade was fear, their nourishment hopeless mirth, and they needed her smiling face to Faith had been watching the darkness and not paying attention to her fingers. She growled as she erased what she had written, returning to the story of Cadence and her unlucky lotto night. What the hell had that been? Faith had never written anything like that before. Heck, her sci-fi was even considered a little too dystopian to really fit the genre. She wrote stories about heroines in their late teens who subverted expectations and toppled greedy hegemonies, the usual soulless crap that readers 25 to 35 ate up and told their friends about. That had been the problem with Seven Sons, she now realized too late. Her audience didn't want a love story. They wanted the same cookie-cutter situations that Faith, or rather Faye, always brought them. Leave the horror for guys like King and Koontz, and leave the romance for the paperback section at the grocery store. Faith knew her place now, and she wouldn't be sliding out of it again. There had been a time, though, hadn't there? Faith put it out of her mind as she typed, but it refused to lie down. There had been a time when she'd stepped into that darkness, a time she didn't like to think about because it made her feel, strange. Come on, Travis said, and Cadence realized he had pushed the back door open as she sat cowering, the chair won't hold for long. If you're going to run, now has to be the time. Something was in that shadowy corner, Faith just knew it. From the corner of her eye, she could almost see it grinning at her. 
She could feel something like tiny prickles slinking up her back, the thought of someone being in here with her making her feel vulnerable. In the ten years she had lived alone, she had never felt so isolated, and as she reached shakily for the cup of pens on her desk, she made sure her other hand continued typing so as to keep up appearances. Cadence just gaped at him, thankful in a way she couldn't begin to put words to. Clearly, it hadn't all been for nothing. Brett had fallen into the same trap her father had, but Travis was still the same sweet boy he had always been. She didn't thank him, didn't really feel capable of words, but she lopped off like a startled deer, moving into the night as she made her escape. The cup went flying, and as it crashed into the corner, Faith made her own escape. She dashed for the door, her hand closing around the knob as her other hand flipped on the lights. She was hoping to blind them after startling them with the cup, but as the lights came on, Faith saw that there was no one to startle. Except for her small arrangement of scattered pens, there was nothing there. She started at the spot for a few seconds before bursting into laughter of her own. She was such an idiot. Faith had gotten spooked for some reason and let her imagination get the better of her. She took a few steps towards the corner, meaning to pick up the pens, but as she bent to grab the slightly dented mesh cup, she heard a different sort of mechanical laughter as it suddenly snickered from the living room. Faith stood up slowly as she looked at the wall like she might be able to see through it. She walked slowly towards the door, hand shaking as she took the knob, her fear back in force. The hallway beyond was dark, but Faith could see the soft light of her flat screen lighting the living room with an eerie glow. Faith put her back to the wall, slowly creeping up the hall as she tried to stop her teeth from clacking together. She could hear the banter between two familiar characters, and Faith believed that the TV might be playing an episode of How I Met Your Mother. Faith could see her cream-colored sectional as she came closer and saw the remote sitting in between two cushions, right where she had left it. She reached around the corner, feeling for the switch, and as it came on, she leaped around, preparing to catch whoever had turned her TV on. The living room and kitchen were clean, the chain and bolt still engaged on her front door, and the house was empty other than her. Faith pursed her lips, walking over to the couch and picking up the remote as she switched the TV off. She had cut Ted off in the middle of his complaints, but it hardly mattered. Faith had seen this episode loads of times, and she hardly needed to see it. Faith had watched a lot of TV in the past year, her mind too flustered to think much about writing. She had stayed on her couch as she tried to ignore the reviews online for Seven Sons, not wanting to see all the hate they had spilled there. The book had been a total flop. People had bought the book thinking it was more of her dystopian works and were not impressed by a love story. They said that Lady Stoss Zion was a paper heroine with no real use other than to give the male characters something to chase, and they found Fabian to be too similar to any number of other characters. They compared the book to Dune or Star Wars or any number of other books, and not in a positive way. The reviews were cutting, often snide, and they just seemed to be used as an excuse to make fun of Faith. How could a writer so talented put something like this out? How could she read over this and think this was a good story? The characters were two-dimensional and sort of ruined the vibe of her books once I realized this was not even her first offense. Someone at Norma Publishing was asleep at the wheel if they thought this thing was finished. Faith had started out trying to defend her work, but after a while, she just stopped going online to check. Joyce didn't seem to mind her going to ground. Her reputation at Norma had soured a little, though they could have taken some of the responsibility for the book. They had published it, after all, and a lot of Joyce's frigidness seemed mean-spirited. Faith shook off the funk, finding herself just sitting and staring at the dark TV, and got up as she prepared to get back to work. Joyce would change her tune once she sent her this latest work. Lotto Night would be her return to the written world, at least for something rather than scorn or laughter. When she got back to her desk, however, she was in for a surprise. Her manuscript was gone. The document she had left open was closed and the file was nowhere to be found. She searched the desktop, 
the trash bin, and the folders on her desktop but couldn't find it. There was no trace that it had ever been there, all except a new document that she couldn't recall having seen before. The title was The Old Manuscript. Faith clicked on it, certain it hadn't been there when she started looking, and the longer she read, the more she came to doubt that she had written it. These were things Faith hadn't thought about in years. A girl once befriended a shadow. Her sisters were afraid of the strange shadows that often scuttled across their rooms, but the girl was taken with them. She thought they were funny, them and their big smiles. She would stay up sometimes and watch them as they played, giggling at them as they scuttled across the ceiling and walls. Even at such a young age, she began to create stories about her shadowy friends. She created a place for them to go during the daytime, things for them to do while they waited for night, and adventures for them to undertake as the sun shone down. She whispered the stories to the shadows at night, and they were enraptured by them. No one had ever talked to them before, most just being afraid. The shadows loved her story so much that they let her peek into their strange world, showing her their world in her dreams. The lands of strange were much different than what she had imagined, and the girl began to write about the places she saw there. The shadows were making something, assembling people that the girl didn't know, and the more she saw, the more she wrote. The adventures of her shadows became less friendly, less childish, but more accurate. She became their chronicler, and the more she wrote, the darker she felt. Gone was the happy little girl, and in her place, she became a quiet child. Her parents didn't understand her new job, so they sealed it away. The lady made her forget with her slow, powerful words, and the girl forgot her shadows. They sealed her words away not quite daring to destroy them, but though forgotten, the shadows were not gone. When her family died suddenly in the night, the girl was the only survivor. They laughed and laughed at the shadows' antics, but the girl could only watch in horror. She went away then, the lady making her forget again before the memories could hurt her too badly. The shadows, however, remembered. Remembered and bided their time. It grew darker as she read through the story. The more she read, the more she remembered, and Faith could feel the tears spilling from her eyes. How had she forgotten? How was it even possible to have forgotten? Her Aunt Terry had taken her in after the accident, the police calling it a gas leak, and taken her to see Dr. Winter one last time. The woman had made her forget, taken away the real memory like she had before, but now, it was like a magic picture you couldn't unsee. She remembered now. She remembered being woken up by her sisters screaming as the shadows scrabbled across every surface of their room. She remembered her parents busting into the room just as her sisters began to chuckle. She remembered her father getting angry, thinking this was all a joke, but then beginning to chuckle himself. They laughed and laughed as she sat there in horror, the smiling shadows filling the room with midnight until she blacked out. She woke up on the back porch as an officer shook her awake. She had dreamed of them sometimes, but Dr. Winter had done her job well, and they were never seen as anything but simple nightmares. She could feel them surrounding her again, see them approaching her from the shadows, but her fear was tempered with something else. She turned her chair, watching them come closer, and the smile that tried to stretch her face was confusing as the tears continued to fall. They came towards her, and Faith scooted back until she realized she was trapped. They had pushed her up against the desk, and now she was stuck in the trap they had created. Despite it all, she felt the desire to laugh creeping up her throat like the start of a cold after a good night's sleep. As she cringed away, one of them extended a hand to her. Faith saw an ancient box held in its midnight grip, and she knew what would be inside before she opened it. Still, she was surprised to see the curling edges of her original bunch of stories nestled at the bottom. She took it out, holding it between her shaking hands like an ancient relic from a bygone time. We need your writing again, Faith the shadow said, smiling hugely as its voice rasped out oddly, there's a project that we need your beautiful mind to see to fruition. Faith tried to answer him, 
but her words were lost amongst the racking laughter that scuttled up her throat. Her laughter sounded odd, brutal, like the laughter you heard from the windows of an insane asylum. It sounded like the laughter you hear rising from the pits of hell. The laughter wouldn't stop her though, quite the contrary. She chuckled as she wrote, the smile hurting her mouth. Who cared about suns and desert planets and dystopian teens and their problems? Faith had a higher calling now, and the laughter must be served.